Joshua, are you able to speak about foldable props? Uh, yes, I am able to speak about them. Uh, in general, uh, I think that they, they, they seemed like a cool idea and most people moved away from them. I suspect they had durability issues and balance issues, uh, but I just don't see hardly anybody using them. Even people who would benefit like from the smaller size uh, tend to stay away from them. About the only time I think that uh, foldable props really make sense is if you also have a foldable frame and you're trying to get that frame down as small as it can be. Werewolf Tactical LLC is looking at the Infra Caddy Cam. Well, with a name like Werewolf Tactical, I can't imagine why you would want a low light camera. Can I just hook it up to an existing VTX? Yes, you can. It's it's it, the Caddx Infra is an analog camera. It has a, a funny box that the wires come out of, but as far as the the it's an in, it's an analog camera in every way that matters. It's just an analog camera with an extra little box. So yes, it will hook up to any analog VTX. Thank you for a $5 super chat, Werewolf Tactical. Quad Mods asks, I keep seeing the Fat Shark Dominator Avatar goggles on sale for 530 Canadian. 530? Other than no video in, are they on par with Walksnail? Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, thank you for your $14 Canadian super chat. Um, they are on par in every way. Uh, yeah, image quality, resolution, uh, range, etc. They're completely comparable. Uh, eventually, someday, maybe, if Walksnail lives up to their promise, Walksnail will release Gen 2 of the system, which will have better range and penetration. And then the, the Dominator goggles will not get that update. Only the Goggles X and future goggles will. But who knows when that'll happen, and who knows if you want to make a buying decision based on that. Joe GFPV, thank you for a $20 super chat. I'm having trouble getting my brand new Mamba F722 Mini to connect to Betaflight. I can flash it, but no matter what, it still won't connect. Joe, um, the number one reason for that to happen would be if you're flashing the wrong target. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go and see if I can identify the target name for this. Well, here is the BLH32 target for the ESC. Ah, and here we can see that there are three different firmwares you can flash depending on which gyro is on the board. So my guess is that that's where you're going wrong. My guess is you're flashing a target with the wrong gyro driver. Now, are these in the Betaflight configurator? They are. Mamba F722, F722A, and F722B. So my guess is that you're flashing the wrong target out of all of these, and that would cause what you're getting here. What you need to do is you need to identify which gyro is on your flight controller. Or you just need to flash them one after the other and see which one works, if any of them. Uh, from IDGAF, IDGF, the props are not the secret to DJI drones flying the way they fly. Yes, the props are part of it. DJI drones fly the way they fly because of the entire engineering of the drone. Simply taking DJI props or the pitch of the props and moving them over to a different drone will not give you the result that you're looking for. Um, yeah. What motor? How so efficient? I don't know. If they, if anyone could answer that question, they would be a, a billionaire DJI engineer, right? It's the entire engineering of the drone from the 
from the frame being lightweight to the battery having high energy density to the motors being ultra efficient to the props being ultra efficient. The entire quadcopter is engineered to a ridiculous degree to produce an incredible result that's very, very difficult to emulate. The question that you're asking is like, like looking at the space shuttle and going, well, how does it go to space? Like, what kind of fuel does it use? And it's like, I could tell you what kind of fuel the space shuttle uses, but that's not going to tell you how it, like, goes to space, keeps human beings alive, and comes back home again. There's so much more to it. The DJI drone is not as complex as the space shuttle, but that's the point I'm getting at. There's a ton of engineering in there, and you can't just reduce it to one thing and then try to emulate that thing. My motors smell funny when I run them for more than 10 minutes. Are they super hot? Is that the smell of your insulation cooking? Um, figure out why your motors are getting hot is the answer. Um, it, maybe the motors are undersized for the prop that you're running. Maybe you're running them at too high a K, you know, too high a voltage and they, the RPMs are too much. There's, a, there's various reasons why motors, maybe it has to do with your PID tuning. Um, there's various reasons why it might be overheating. But um, definitely, definitely don't just keep running them until they smoke. Because if that, that smell is probably the insulation starting to sort of cook. And if you keep doing it, you'll destroy them. Uh, is iNav as good as Betaflight? I want the return to home and position hold, but I don't know if it's worth using iNav over Betaflight. iNav's acro performance is not quite as good. Uh, it's still good enough for a lot of people. You should also keep in mind that Betaflight 4.5's GPS Rescue is not as good as iNav. But let's, let me put it this way. Betaflight 4.5's GPS Rescue is about as good as iNav's acro performance. Right? So, like, if you want... If the real reason to choose iNav, if all you want is return to home, I think Betaflight 4.5 is good enough. But if you want position hold, waypoint missions, altitude hold, all that other stuff that iNav has, that's why you would go with iNav. Frosty, thank you for $5. I'm dipping my toes in walk snails. Should I get the goggles L or run the VRX on my Attitude V6? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would probably run the VRX on the Attitude V6 because I like the binocular style of goggles better than I like box goggles. But I would want to find out if the latency was going to suck. And I'm not sure if the HDMI input uh, on those goggles has bad latency. So I might change my mind about that. Why is my Fat Shark Dominator HD beeping fast and repeatedly? It thinks the battery voltage is low. It does that when it thinks the input voltage is, it gets below, I don't remember the number, but when it gets below something like 7.5 volts, it, it starts beeping like that. 